Hey guys, how you doing? Hope you're having a great day. Today I'm going to be continuing my series on density matrix theory, and this time we'll be discussing some definitions and the consequences of those definitions. So, the density matrix, which is usually denoted rho, and it could depend on time, it's an operator, is defined as psi of t, the ket side, times psi of t, the bra side, where psi is the state of our system at time t. Now, let's look at some of the consequences of this definition. Well, quantum mechanics, quantum mechanics tells us we can expand any general state psi in terms of a linear combination of the basis states. So we can expand psi of t as a sum over all n, some coefficient that depends on time t times the basis state n. So n is the nth basis state and c sub n of t is the probability amplitude of being in state n at time t. And similarly for the bra we have that would be the basis expansion for the bra of psi of t. Note the complex conjugate on the coefficient there. Now let's expand rho in terms of these uh, basic expansions here. So, this is our basis expansion of rho of t. Note you got this part here, which is just some number that depends on t and this part here, which is sort of a basis matrix, if that's a thing. But I think you know what I mean by that term. So, let's Im try to imagine this concretely. Let's take a two-state system. Where we have two basis states. Basis state 1, which is equal to 1, 0. <laughs> And we can write the bra of 1 as the row vector. And basis state 2, which is 0, 1. And the bra of state 2, 0, 1. Now, row of t is going to look like this. Okay, so there we took rho, and all we did was take, we assumed two-state system, and we see that we can write rho in terms of a multiplication between the probability amplitude coefficients. And note that the diagonals are the populations of the states. This is the population of state 1, this is population of state 2, and the off diagonals, these are called coherences. So off diagonals are called 
go here and says diagonals are populations, which you probably already know. So, another thing that you should notice from this analysis is that the vector and or not the vector, the matrix, uh, the ket of n times the bra of m is just <laughs> the, you just have a one, it's a, okay, it's a matrix with a one in the nth row and nth column and zeros everywhere else. And that's an important thing to notice. So therefore, we're going to introduce some new notation. We're going to introduce the notation row n m well, really, it's not even new notation. It's just the m nth element of the density matrix is equal to c n of t times c m star of t. Now, let's use this definition of row n m to examine the average value of an arbitrary operator a. Okay. So what we did, we examined the average value of any general operator A, and we see that it's the sum over these indices of the density matrix element, rho mn, times this um, the matrix element MN of A, okay? So, what we notice by that So, I won't do it here, but if you multiply a row by A Thinking about them as matrices, so you multiply rho by A, you're going to get some new matrix, which is rho times A, and from this, we get that the average value equals the trace of that matrix, because the trace is just this element times this element, plus, and then you go down one, that element times that element, so on and so forth. And by the property of traces, it also equals, you can switch those around. So, that's an important property. Another property is that the trace of rho squared is going to be equal to 1 for a pure state. This is how you can test for your pure state or a mixed state. You take your density matrix, you square it, you take the trace of it, if you get 1, you got a pure state. Well, if you take the trace and you get less than 1, then you have a mixed state. So 
So for example, in the last video, I said we can represent unpolarized light by this density matrix. Now, if we square this density matrix, let's see what we get. So we get a half, which is less than one, so therefore we know we have a mixed state. And if you take the case of the diagonally polarized light, which can be represented by the matrix with a half and of is all the elements. You get one. So diagonally polarized light would be a pure state because it can be represented by a single vector. All right, that's all I wanted to talk about. So I hope you guys found that helpful. Um, if you liked the video, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, give me a thumbs down. But besides that, thanks for watching. Have a great day.